Xenos Rampant. Today we're going full Gonzo the Gonzarian. Let me slap the roof of this game and tell you, you can fit so many options in here. We're going grimmer, we're going darker. Check it out. We have got Zeno the Morph. He is a demon. He is fearsome. He's a flyer. I might be cheating on points. Demons automatically have fearsome. So I spend an extra point, whatever. He's an eight point model. Maybe a seven point doesn't really make a difference. We have a Psyker over here. He does count as a greater Xenomorph. Did you know greater Xenomorphs can be the leader of your force? How cool is that? We do have a Psyker for the first time. They work a lot like Wizards in Dragon Rampant. Now, he is... Psyche the Psyker is uh, just, you know, reduced model count. He's just one of them, but he's got five strength points. And he does only have two of the abilities. He has Terror, so he can suppress a unit on a 7-up. And he has Teleport on a 7-up. He can move a unit 2d6 inches. Classed as Light Infantry. Got to remember that. In the front here, we have our unit of Fanatics. They are classed as... I think I used Berserkers for the template. But they do have the Improved Courage, which we spent a couple of points on that. And then in the back, we've got a couple of units of Undead. Yeah, we're going full Rage Zombies on these guys. Those are huge mobs of 15. They are slow. They are Undead. And they are cheap. They only cost three points each. I also bought Contagion. When you fight with one of these, if by some miracle they manage to do one strength point of damage to your unit, or any amount of strength points, they get a model back. They get one wound back, because they eat you. Pretty sweet. And they will be opposed by the sons of Robot Guilty Man, the boys in blue and gold. There's been a lot of discussion over on the Lead Adventure Forums, the best miniature war game forum out there, about whether or not Elite infantry in Xenos Rampant are OP or under cost. These guys are just your bog standard elite infantry with the one exception being that I did up armor them. That reduces their movement to just six inches per turn but it bumps their armor up to five. Nigh impregnable machines of death. Eight points per squad. We've got three of them and of course the squad with the big boy here in the front is our leader squad. Let's see what happens. Let's see if we can find a way to counteract the fact that, yeah, tactically they are OP. But what about strategically? We're going to try Scenario Golf. The attacker, whom we are going to designate as the Sons of Robot Guilty Man, they set up on six inch, within six inches of any one side of the table. The Demonic Forces will set up within six inches, a strip six inches across the center of the table. And then the Demonic Forces score victory points for every unit that moves off the table. They've got a total of 10 victory points available to them, plus victory points for destroying the attacker's enemies. They get two points if they destroy an enemy unit. The attackers only get victory points for destroying units. Just running the numbers, there are three units... Basically, the zombies are worth one point if they're destroyed. The other three units are worth two points if they're destroyed. So there's only eight victory points on the table for the attackers. Interesting. If we can get two or three units off the table, the defenders will win. And that's not out of the realm of possibility, because while they are tough, while they are combat monsters, the elite foot aren't crazy fast. They're going to be hard-pressed to chase these guys down particularly given those two mobs of zombies who can act as a screening force. We will be using the same table setup as last time. I think it's an interesting table. A lot of line of sight blocking terrain across the center of it. Some fairly open lanes of fire, particularly along the highway here. We can kind of button that up so it looks a little bit nicer. And then one unit of rough ground down here, another unit of rough ground that does block line of sight. You can't shoot over that railroad embankment. And then just some rocks to further break up line of sight. The attacker has to choose a table edge, and they need to choose this table edge over here. They're going to be chasing the enemy across the table. They don't want the enemy getting across these railroad tracks, because once the enemy does, there's no line of sight. You're not going to be able to chase them down. The attacker then sets up over here. No surprise, the totally not the Space Marines. No surprise, the boys in blue will go hard up the middle. They're going to take advantage of all that open ground. They've got one unit behind the railroad tracks just to keep the demon forces honest. 
Well, as honest as you can expect out of... Ooh. Well, as honest as you can expect out of demons. For their part, they get to set up second. So we drop our leader right in the center of the table. He's going to be able to take advantage of this cover. You've got your fanatics, your berserk infantry, right here. Also going to take advantage of the cover. There is one unit of zombies way over there. Screening force. we got another screening force here that can go north or south. And then our psyker here, he can just start trekking off to the east. And maybe he can get off the table. As the attacker, the boys in blue get the first activation. But before we do that, we need to roll for some commander traits. While we're going full gonzo with the, the undead and the demons and all that stuff, we might as well go full gonzo with the leaders as well. The boys in blue are going to use the tactical commander traits. We roll a d6, and with a result of a 6, ooh, that's a good one. Each turn, one unit within 6 inches of your commander, remember that's this fella, may ignore a compulsory wild charge. Well, we don't have any of those, so it doesn't do them any good. Good, that makes it easy to remember. For the demons, we're going to go with the Warlord Commander trait. We roll a d6, and with a result of a 1, your commander's unit rolls one fewer dice for all attack and shoot actions. So he's only going to be rolling uh, 9 or 4 dice. It'll be 9 dice on the attack, but again, I don't think that's going to matter so much. So we got kind of a weak demon that has been summoned by our Psyker over here. And with that out of the way, we can do our activation for the Elites. And for, unfortunately for them, our elites do not get a free move activation. They have to roll a five or better. We're going to start up there. We're going to actually we'll start with the leader. They don't have any line of sight to any of the bad guys. We got to at least get up kind of behind this row of hills or the the buildings here. We'll start with our commander. Commander gets a plus one on his activation. He just needs a four up, and he's going to move up here. Remember, they move three inches per activation. So the commander will move straight up. These guys, let's check. They are rangers. So they use their normal shoot and fight and attack activation numbers, but they are not fleet-footed. They don't move in close order, so they would be slowed down by this rough terrain. We're just going to bring them up. Actually, we're going to go those guys first. They are going to move up, and then this last unit down here in the bottom of your screen on a 4 will not activate. They move on a 5 or better, so these guys stay, and at least we get two units pressing forward. The boys in blue are deployed three inches into the table. They've moved up as far as they can. They're the slowest units on the table. Because they are so heavily armored, they are only going to be moving at three inches per move activation. But before we take the attacker's first move, we need to figure out special traits. Our boys in blue are going to be using the tactical commander trait. And with a result of five, the commander ignores the effects of fearsome opponents. So the commander now does not suffer fear from the demon prince, Xenos the Morph. Then we have to figure out what Xenos's special ability is. We're going to go with the Warlord Commander traits. We roll a d6, and on a result of a 5, he's a crack shot. When shooting or when using Firefight, he may reroll two failed hits, which I don't know how good a shooter he is. He's got, like, some demonic force blast powers. He can't even shoot, so his is useless, and hey, that's fine. It's one less thing to remember. The only one we really do have to remember is this guy ignores Fearsome if he gets into melee with the Demon Prince. That's it. Now, for this game, let's talk about the, the strategy. And maybe this is a little bit cheap because I've set it up to illustrate how you can overcome the dominating combat power of elites. You can't win against them tactically. you got to win strategically. So here what we have are... One victory point here. There's another zombie unit in the back there that is worth one victory point if the elites knock them out. On the other side, if we can get the Berserk Infantry, the Demon Lord, and our Psyker, who's off screen at the moment, off the table, that's six victory points. So really what that means for our, our elites are they need to knock out at least one more unit over and above killing the two units of zombies. The zombies are going to die quick. They're not very tough. If we can get one more unit, we can at least play for the tie. So that's kind of what we're looking at. The elite infantry now get to activate, and we're going to start with our leader. He activates on a four. His move action is on a four, and the other two units will move on a five up. So the leader gets a seven and moves, and then we're going to try to bring these guys to the top of the rail line. Clambering over the hill is classed as rough ground. They do not have fleet foot, loose order in this case. So they are only going to activate on a 3, and boy, you are not going to have much luck if you're rolling like that. 
the forces of hell are running away from the forces of forces of righteousness, and our leader gets to move five inches, and he'll just fade right back to here. The berserk infantry can move four inches. We'll move that leader back to about here. And then our psyker can move a total of four inches. And again, we'll bring him over here, trying to keep him out of the line. We'll keep him on the screen, at least. We're going to try to keep him out of line of sight of the shooters. Remember that the elites can fire across the length of the table. Uh, the last thing we're going to do, the zombies in the back here are going to go to ground. They are running interference for the berserk infantry. These zombies, however, are going to use their free activation to move the three inches up to here. And, you know, it occurs to me that, that having these guys with the free movement is a great way to counterbalance the fact that they're kind of terrible in every sense of the word. You'll see, once we get into melee with these guys, man, they're just going to fall apart. Now, one thing I'll point out is in Xenos Rampant, when you are using undead, if you shoot at undead, they don't suffer the, the same effects as, as um, in melee. In the other rampant games, when you so basically when you attack these guys, you for every you have to they have an armor. What is their armor? Let's just put some real numbers on this. The zombies have an armor of one. Oh, so I guess it doesn't really matter. So every hit that you do against these guys removes one. These zombies have now gone to ground. They are classed as having an armor of two. So every two hits removes a figure, except because they're undead, you don't need a full two hits. If you have an odd number of hits, you're still going to do that one extra. So I guess, you know, come to think of it, um, you know, going to ground will still help, just not as much as it ordinarily would. But that only applies for attacks, not for shooting. For shooting, they still just, you, you still need to do a, an even number of hits to remove that final figure. I, I don't know why I'm explaining that well. I think you guys get it, though. That's the end of the... Demons activation. Now let's take a look at what the uh, heroes are going to do. We're going to start with the free action. We get a free shoot action on this zombie horde. The zombie horde is within nine inches. And there's eight, basically within eight. Hitting on fours, every single success removes a zombie. One, two, three. Oh, you, you, you tease. One, two, three, four zombies, and we'll just pull them off the back. One, two. Three, four zombies go down. Now, the zombies do need to make a morale check. They will not be suppressed, but if we roll a four or less, then we have successfully shot up this one unit in a single attack action. We did not, so the zombies stay on the board, blocking things up. We're going to try to get these elites up onto the railroad trellis so they can start shooting at the other zombie horde. And with the result of a four... That's the end of the elite turn. Now, this is the other way that you defeat elites. You just have them roll to move and keep rolling fours on their activations. And uh, that's pretty embarrassing, guys. Here we are at the start of the demon's turn at the end of... Here's the table at the start of our runaway activation. Here is the table at the start of the demons running away action. And here's what it looks like at the end. You know what? We might as well pull these zombies back. If we get them into long range, further than nine inches away from the elites, their armor goes up by one. It's just as good as going to ground. And if we're that much closer to the back line, we might get one of these zombie units off the board too. And if that happens, that's one more victory point. Five victory points. The elites cannot win. And now we have to zoom out because our elites are so far away from their intended targets. You know, we're, we're, we're beyond the nine inches. If this unit opens fire at these zombies, they will only do one wound for every two successful hits. And, you know, I, I think we need to bring these guys up. I just, I think strategically the elites are in a world of hurt on this particular scenario. Um... We got to bring, let's try and bring the, these, these guys in the back up. And with a five, they will move to the top of the railroad trellis. And then we're going to, so those guys are more than nine inches away, right? So they would be shooting at a bit of a penalty. Yeah, we got them away. So if we take the free shot, we're only hitting on two. We're going to take the free shot with the leader. We're going to take the free shot with these guys. Our leader is then going to try to move up to the gap. And maybe we can put some, some heat down on one of these other units. So we take the shot, 
hitting on fours, and we're only going to do a kill for every two hits this time. A little better roll, one, two. There's one hit, two hits, and three hits all together. So we'll take off one, two, three zombies. The zombies have to make a morale check, and they are now going to be at a total of minus three. Well, wait a minute. Let's think about this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They're still at half strength, so they still roll two dice. And at minus three, they get a result of a two. They stay on the board. They are not suppressed. Undead cannot be suppressed. And then we have to decide what to do with our leader. And, of course, we're going to... You know, if we take the shot, we could clear these guys out. Why don't we do that? Let's just take the shot. Uh, again, every two hits, we get a one hit here. And it's just going to be one hit altogether. Guys, that's a little embarrassing. One hit. Now, the good news is if we roll... We're only rolling one dice for morale. Because the zombie unit is at less than half strength. But we're only at minus one. So unless we roll a one... Four, they stay on the board, and that was, you know, that turn did not go well. We did at least get our elites up on top of the trellis. It's an inch and a half of movement to get to the top, or three inches to get to the top, if you will. But that's going to be it for those guys. Back over on this side of the table, our psyker is going to be able to move to get off the table. Our warlord gets off the table, and these guys are going to move into cover back here. So our Berserk Infantry is very berserkedly headed for home. I guess they lost a battle uh, strategically and are just trying to preserve their forces. We'll go ahead and bring these zombies back. They're a couple of turns away from the baseline. But again, if this unit can get free, we'll bring this unit back to here. And that's going to be the end of the turn for the Forces of Hell. Since they're not inclined to move, we're going to go ahead and take a shot with this unit down here in the south. The elite infantry are hitting for every pair of fours or better. We get one, two, and that's going to be it. Two hits all together. We'll remove two zombies. And now we roll one die, and at minus two... Hey, look at that. We finally eliminated one. So one victory point goes to the boys in blue. Now our leader is going to try to activate. We're going to move him up on a four or better. He is going to move up into the gap there. And we're going to bring these guys down, looking for some line of sight. I, I don't even know where we go. I think we bring them down to here. And it's really not going to matter because, uh, well, you'll see when we look at the other side of the ledger. For starters, starting on the railroad tracks means that the elite foot can only move another inch and a half. There's no line of sight to any of these units. We're going to have our second unit escape. So now the score is four victory points. Oh no, it's six victory points to one victory point with only one victory point on the table. This was a really short episode. Man, the elite infantry really got their butts handed to them this time, didn't they? Well, of course they did. We set everything up and gave them every penalty that we could. But really, this was more of a thought experiment to just demonstrate that elites aren't the end-all be-all of this game. You just have to try to plan to work around their weaknesses. With only three units on the table... They're limited in what they can do. They are relatively slow, so that's another factor that you can run around and achieve your victory conditions. You can get your objectives done before they can even get into position. Now, granted, they did have a tough time with the activation rolls, but that's blaming the dice for poor strategic thinking. I think we're going to run this scenario again, but what we'll do is we're going to change a little bit of the setup on the boys in blue uh, change their abilities. Instead of going with heavy armor, we're going to try something different. The other thing we'll do is we'll actually start out by rolling because we also kind of cheated by saying they're just the attackers. Normally, it's a 50, 50, 50, 50 it's easy for me to say, normally it's a 50-50 chance. You have to roll a d6 and the high roller is the attacker. If these guys were on the defense, they might have had a much easier time getting off the table, even with those poor activation rolls. And bear in mind, that's the real big difference is if you have a whole bunch of free movements, then free moves instead of free shoots, you want to pick a scenario where you win by moving. Don't pick a scenario where you win by shooting because then the elites will beat you every time. So come back again here next week and we'll play another version of this scenario. Same table, basically the same troops, but I also want to show you how cool the, the rules for the demons are. Until then, I'm praying for you.